this thing on? Well, I think it's on. Maybe it isn't. No. Well, it's on. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. I'm here to tell you today, kind viewer, that the extraterrestrials are out there. Oh, yes, they are out there, and they are coming. And I will give you good scientific explanations, including how and why they keep cutting off the electricity in my apartment. This, of course, is completely coincidental with me not paying my utility bill. I mean, they work at the power company. They practically own the place. I think my girlfriend is an extraterrestrial. Why else would she leave me for a Pilates instructor? And look at me. Come on! Why do I think the extraterrestrials are coming? Hmm. Consider this. This galaxy is 13 billion years old. This planet is nearly 4 billion years old. <laughs> what do you think? The rest of the galaxy was sitting on their thumbs for 9 billion years? Civiliz civilizations could have risen and fallen well before us. These extraterrestrials could be ancient. And they've had eons to build up the technology so that they could travel the hundred thousand some odd light years across the galaxy. There is a fourth option of Fermi's paradox that isn't considered. That they are already here. Well, no, that'll do it for this week. Join me next week when I review what type of cats to use to soothe the extraterrestrials. Hello to my four or five loyal viewers. It's time for my reader email. This email is from John in Uranus. That's subtle. The email reads, Hey girl, how you doing with your fine self? Oh, he's a charmer. I want to know if it was okay if I could take you on a spaceship to the edge of the solar system and me and you could... Yeah, that's inappropriate. I'm not going to read the rest of that one. And besides, John, space travel is no picnic. It took the Apollo 11 astronauts three days to get to the moon from Earth. You could drive to Seattle to Phoenix in less time, if you don't obey any traffic laws and don't sleep, but still. The Voyager 1 was launched in 1977, and it's just now a little bit outside the solar system. And that is faster than any unmanned spaceship we have today. And no offense, actually, probably much offense. I am not too enthused to spend 35 years with you on a ship considering the rest of your email. So John from Uranus, I have to decline your request. And thank you for watching. If we ever get the funding to build a space ark to go to Proxima Centauri, I hope you're the first one on it. So here was 1995. Maybe it was 1996. Could have been 1997. That was kind of a blur to me. Doesn't really matter. I was talking to Jerry Lee Jerry. A man who could shred a guitar like a paper shredder shreds incriminating documents. Was not the smartest man though. One day, Jerry comes up to me after this wild show in Brazil, Indiana, and he looks like he's got an idea. You could see it in his face. He says to me, man, I know where we can find aliens and life and stuff. I humor him. Tell me, Jerry, where? In the bottom of the ocean, dude. I look at him like he's crazy. But I let him continue. At the bottom of the oceans, there's like microbes and stuff living down there where there's so much pressure no human can survive. <clears throat> I said to him, Jerry, you know better than to bring that up. Go deep in the ocean and what took my eye? <clears throat> he said, focus. <clears throat> Bad choice of words. Concentrate, man. They're called barrel files. I think about it. Didn't they tour with like Everclear and Ace of Base and Candlebox once? He said, no man, why would those three bands even tour together? It's a scientific term for things that like living in high pressure places, like the ocean. Now, he's making sense, but something's bugging me here. <clears throat> so I tell Jerry, if stuff lives in the ocean, it's not alien, it's in the ocean. He says, no man, if stuff like that can live in the ocean here, they could probably live on like Neptune or something. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I know they probably can't live on Neptune, but I got what he was saying. There are so many weird organisms that live in the bottom of the sea, or in volcanoes, or in the coldest polar reaches deep in the Arctic. And maybe the space lord that takes you over may be living on 
Titan or something. That's deep, man. That's real deep. I've been stuffed in your pocket for the last hundred days. When I don't get my bath, I take it out on the slaves. So grease up your base.